Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Focus. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an outstanding uh, guest with us uh, this morning, um, Reverend Dr. St. Clair Gray III from Conyers, Georgia. He's a speaker, he's an author, and also a success coach, and he'll tell us about that uh, as we go along. Good morning, uh, uh, Pastor Gray. Good morning, Dr. Brooks. Always good to hear your voice and to be on your show. Thank you once again for having me. <laughs> uh, well, I know my ratings are going up now. <laughs> oh, my God. Bless you, sir. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about, I uh, get an update on your ministry and Kanye's uh, Georgia. And I think the first okay. time we met, I think you were in Baltimore, I believe, wasn't it? I, w- I was actually in uh, Mount Rainier, Maryland, which is probably about 30 to 35 miles uh from Baltimore, close okay. to the uh, Washington, D.C. line. Yes, okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to fast forward this and, and uh, uh, ask you, what is man's purpose uh, on earth? In other words, uh, um, uh, we you had a, um, uh, a writing in one of your scripts there, uh, we're here for a reason. But mm-hmm. give us a little background. So we have many people just don't know why they're here. They think just here to be here or have a good time or, or whatever. You, uh, but give us a little background. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I appreciate you know the opportunity. <laughs> I think when we look at uh, man's purpose here on earth. I think what we have to do, we have to first of all get out of the traditional uh, church cliche. Okay. Because we hear so many people say, I'm here just to praise the Lord. I'm here to praise God. I'm here to sing and here to worship. All of that is important. I'm not diminishing that Mm -hmm. or telling someone that you can't praise or worship. However, we're here to carry out our, our goal. God has deposited in all of us a divine assignment to accomplish his will here on earth, whether it's whatever type of job, whatever type of hobby, whatever type of calling we have, mm-hmm. that is our fulfillment. We look at our, our great heroes and sheroes throughout history. We find that they uh, carried out their calling. Uh, for those who try to be super spiritual, Dr. Bush, I tell them to look into the Bible. Uh, when God created Adam, God placed Adam in the Garden of Eden, but he also gave him an assignment to water the garden okay. and to take care of it. He didn't tell Adam to get on your knees. He didn't tell Adam to simply uh, raise up holy hands and just sing all day, but he told Adam, I need you to do something because that which you do will become more fruitful. So I think all of us have a purpose on, on this on this earth, a purpose in this life to carry out, whether it's being a doctor, whether it's being a lawyer, whether it's being a community activist such as yourself, whether it's being a school teacher, whatever it is, we have to carry it out so that, one, we not only help ourselves, but, two, we help make a way for those who are the least, the left, and those who are, uh, who are less fortunate than we are. So that's our purpose. Uh, God had uh, uh, several uh, duties for us. He, 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 I think it's Ephesians, um, uh, uh, the book of Ephesians, it's prophets, mm-hmm. apostles, evangelists, pastors, exactly. teachers, you know. He had a purpose for all of us. Most definitely. And if we look at that, that's... Um, that we look at that as the fivefold ministry, God calls them to be apostles, to be prophets, to be teachers, so that when he called all of that is for the edification and the building up of his kingdom, okay. so that all of mankind, men and women, all of mankind will be aspiring to do God's work. What does that mean by serving others? Because when we look at service, we think that for some reason people ought to serve us, when in essence, we are to serve them. We serve them by doing. We serve them by building them up and by helping them to become all uh, all that they are called to be. Yes, when you, uh, 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 I mentioned uh, <coughs> where we, we, we first met, uh, well, actually, I, I'll fast forward this again. <laughs> when we personally met, uh, you flew from... Uh, I said Baltimore, but that's what, what, what actually city? 
It's actually Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, uh, uh, right you, across, the, pretty much right across you from D.C. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now, what happened is that you you came here to participate in uh, uh, Daisy's Resource and Developmental Center uh, annual telethon, and we had a, a great time there. Beca- yes, we did. Because uh, uh, the... Uh, Family Matters uh, was her name uh, that was was the host for the show. Uh, Joe Marie, Marie Payton, yeah, Joe, Joe, yeah, Joe Marie Payton. Now this is just God put us all together, you know, and we had a. I still remember that uh, we had a great time. While you were here, we made provisions to do a TV show. I, <laughs> we left the telethon <laughs> and for an hour and did a TV show, then came back exactly. and oh boy, then. Uh, you flew. That, was, that was so much fun. Right. And I, I want to thank you. Thank you again for taking time from your busy schedule. Give us an update on your ministry You uh, since you've been in Conyers, Georgia. I think what happened, you you um, had a feeling that you wanted to get into politics. And you, you, yes. Well, um, I had the church in Maryland, um, closed the church um, in Maryland, uh successful pastor for nine years in Maryland. Um, when I decided to move to Georgia, members of the congregation didn't want another pastor, so we kind of shut the doors. And I made recommendations for, you know, for other churches, people to attend. Yeah. Moved down to Georgia, got into politics very briefly uh, uh, in a small place called Social Circle, Georgia. Okay. And for the listeners who may not have ever heard of Social, Church, Social <laughs> Circle Georgia, it was the place where they filmed the original Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, original Dukes of Hazard, 10 miles from where they also filmed In the Heat of the Night. So kind of, you know, in the country. So I, got, I delved into politics, um, got elected on the uh, Social Circle City School Board, did that for a year. It was actually a two-year term, uh, Dr. Mm-hmm. Brooks, but I only served one year because I was fortunate and blessed to get married, moved out of the area, so therefore I had to let go of my position because once you're out of the uh, school district, mm-hmm. pretty much have to just kind of step down. So I stepped down, um, nothing negative. Um, but I got into that, and it was really an opportunity for me to help individuals, and more importantly, help out the kids and try and help them with the academics help them out with uh, social causes and trying to help direct them in the path they should go. But it really gave me a, a taste of the political world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll say that it, it, was, it was real political. And, and, I, and I've learned that politics is not for everybody. Mm-hmm. And, 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 to, and, to, and to really um, bring it closer to home, I realized I can do more work from the outside, from from the from the preacher perspective, from the activist perspective, mm-hmm. then I can inside that because there's just certain things I can't say, certain things I can't do okay. just because of the just because of the political ramifications. Right, right. Well, I noticed that you started the uh, Greater Entrepreneurial Success Group. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, yeah, so, uh, that's something I started. My wife and I. Once we got married, we started something called Monday Morning Networking. Mm-hmm. That was the name of it. And basically, we understood, because we're both entrepreneurs, we both understood that Monday morning is hard for a lot of entrepreneurs. They, they've come off a great weekend with family, with friends. Now it's time to get back into the hustle. And a lot of times, um, entrepreneurs, those who are in sales, they get caught up in meetings or they're scratching their head trying to figure out how to plan their week. So we just started something just as a Monday morning networking, hoping just to have 12 people every week. Mm -hmm. And we started that about two and a half years ago. So all of a sudden, the goal was just 12. So it didn't start magnifying itself so much that we had to decide to rebrand, rebrand it to just not saying Monday morning networking. So we called it the Greater Entrepreneur Success Group, whereby we're meeting every Monday here in Conyers, Georgia. But we're not just limiting ourselves to the scope of Conyers, but we're trying to take it and make it into a global organization whereby we're just trying to teach, we're trying to educate, and we're trying to connect businesses uh, one with another. Now, now but, but, but why is it important for African-Americans uh, to 
have their own business? Well, it's important for African Americans to have their own business because, number one, if we don't own the businesses in our community, then we can't own the politics in our community. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, that happens so many times, we find politicians that don't look like us coming in our coming into our community, trying to tell us what's best for us. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, if we allow people who don't look like us mm -hmm. to come into our community to tell us what's best for us, then we give up control. So one of the things that is important for people of color uh, to do is to own their own businesses, because when they own their own business, they call the shots. Number two, they create a legacy not only for their family, but for generations to come. And number three, they're able to accomplish, or I should say achieve the American dream. One of the things, Dr. Brooks, is that I, be I believe that we always say the American dream is to own your own home. I want to reverse that. So I believe the American dream should be to own your own business. Okay. Because when you own your own business, you're able to pass down from generations to generations that which you've already started. So you don't have to worry about uh, people going, you know, leaving college uh, with all the student loans, all this debt, trying to find a job, or even people who just can't, who just feel that college is not for them, that they can have a place to call home, that they can work at expand. So I always think it's important for people of color, people of African-American descent to own their own business, because once you own it, then you're able to accomplish all that you want to, all that you can accomplish, and and more importantly, no one can put a ceiling upon what your true worth is, true worth and value. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we're talking uh, with Reverend Doctor Sinclair Gray the uh, Third from Conyers, uh, Georgia, and. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the program, he's a speaker, he's an author, and also a business coach. Um, uh, tell us, uh, you have a uh, TV, not a TV, but a, uh, um, um, a a way that you get word out to the really to the world, right through uh, online. Uh, exactly. Um, of course, I definitely use um, definitely uh, email marketing strategies. Um, okay places like Constant Contact, but I'm also very heavily on LinkedIn because I believe you have to connect in the professional world. But I also use um, different videos through my YouTube, but also through referrals because I believe that if you connect people and you know how to uh, help people, mm -hmm. then they will in turn help you. Some people call it karma, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, I believe it, but I believe if you help people and you help them to uh, meet the right folks, if you help them in their business, help them to understand life struggles, then I believe that they will in turn spread the word. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not everybody, not everybody is going to do that, mm -hmm. but if you do it enough, then you will get something in return. I notice when I get an um, uh, email from you, I blast it uh, to my whole uh, email <laughs> world, you know, because I... I I feel that everyone uh, should be aware of the message that you're trying to promote. Uh, for instance, well, the, go ahead. I appreciate it. I, I thank you so much. You know, it's definitely a calling, so thank you so much. Yeah, it's the, the, the last one I got here, we're here for a reason, and that really touched me there, and I knew everyone should be should be aware of that. Um, I, I also... We have to make people aware that we are from the same dust, right? Most definitely, definitely. I think one of the, one of the mistakes that many people make is that when we look at people of color, um, especially those of African American descent, we tend to focus, and I mean, we from a general sense, Doctor Brooks, yeah. we tend to focus so much on the slavery aspect okay. that we forget to look at post-slavery, I mean, I mean, my father, I'm sorry, not post-slavery, pre-slavery. Okay. That we, that we are descendants from kings and queens. We are descendants from engineers and scientists. We are descendants from doctors. We are descendants from greatness. And what happens if we're so focused on that we're descendants from slaves, from slaves, we forget everything pre-slavery. Mm -hmm. And that is a trick by, that's a trick by, uh, 
a lot of people in our educational system, mm-hmm. that's a trick by the enemy because, you know, if we're looking at from a spiritual world, if I can just get you to concentrate on one thing but not introduce you to everything that happened before that one thing, then I will keep you limited. So I believe that, you know, when we understand who we are and where we came from, then, then that will help us to grow. That's why I believe image, images and imagery are important. When we go to churches, what we see every day, if it does not reflect our greatness, then too many people will succumb to the negativity. They will succumb to that which is inferior rather than understand that, you know, when it comes to God, there's no superior or inferior. There is a relationship. There's a relationship. So I think that we have to understand that and we have to understand who we are. It sounds like you're a student of uh, the late Dr. Carter G. Whitson. He's a uh, labeled as the father of uh, black history. And later that became, uh, uh, well, well, I'm sorry, father of Negro history. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. And then that was uh, was the Black uh, Negro History Week. Then it was extended to uh, Negro History Month. And now we we should be studying. Uh, it sh- should be incorporated in the history books. You know, so everybody can oh, understand. Most yeah, and most, so so he he, he had a book out called "The Miseducation of the Negro," and I think that's what you were uh, referring to. Most definitely. I I definitely think I think what happens is that one when we try to relegate or 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 just have black history just in February, then I think we just limit our potential. We limit our history because every February we learn the same thing over and over again. (laughs) Right. And and one of the things that, you know, we understand that there's so many quotes with, uh, with Dr. Woodson. One of the things that I love so much about him that I think that we often overlook when it comes to education, he said, we're too many black folks are so busy going to schools, trying to get their bachelor's and getting their master's, that they're so busy trying to ed- get advanced degrees to work for someone yeah. rather than get advanced degrees to work for themselves. So I think that when we understand that when we're going to school, that we should go and with the, with the anticipation of gaining as much information as possible so that we can take it back to our community and apply it for our own for our own business for our own organization, then we will go ahead and start making the difference. But we're so busy trying to get an education to work for somebody else, whereby whereby we have no plan to say, you know, I'm going to use everything that I've learned so that I can go ahead and apply it and, and use it for myself. And to piggyback on that, uh, uh, we 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 go to school to get. To work for someone else, we should be. And you mentioned about the going to the business and uh, being an entrepreneur ourselves, so that we can employ our people, and not exactly. depend on someone else to do it. Exactly, it's almost kind of going back with the hand up, like give me, give me, give me. Now, you know, I understand you have to work for somebody for experience. I, I understand that, but there should be a game plan. What is the plan? Is the plan to work for somebody 20 years or 30 years and not start your own? And once again, I'm not, dis- I'm not trying to tell somebody that they can't work for somebody. Yeah. But understand this. When you work for somebody, you're helping them to accomplish their dreams. Um, real quick, Dr. Bush, I was at a function last night, and I'm teaching the class. And this gentleman just blew my mind last night. He was a general manager at this major hotel firm. And when I saw him, couldn't recognize him because normally I see him in a suit. In a suit. He was dressed in jeans. Okay. And he said, you know what, Doc? He said, I quit my job. And I'm like, why did you quit your job? He said, I'm tired of making my supervisor millions of dollars. So okay. I'm, in this, I'm in this class to learn how to open up my own hotel because he came to the realization all of his knowledge, all of his skills, all of his talents, if he can make someone else millions of dollars, why can't he do it himself? Right, right. <laughs> okay. And, and that I, just kind of blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, just, it's a fact. You've been well, something exactly. we never, never thought about. And another thing, too, is uh, um, uh, why is it important for the business owner to think globally, you know? And, and I, I, I know I, I call, um, when I got, I received a call from a person doing marketing, and I found out that person was from India. I say, wow, mm-hmm. 
But but we should be thinking global globally now. Too. Right, because number one, we're in, we're in the we're, we're, we're in the global in the global world, and because we're in the global world, we need to know how to do business globally because. When we just do business locally, when I mean locally within your neighborhood, within your community, you're only going to stay but so small. Mm-hmm. When we start thinking globally, what we're in the essence doing, we're taking our talent, we're taking everything that we have to offer, and we're telling the world that I can provide a solution to the problem. So what happens, that expands your operations, that gives you greater opportunity to not only see the world, but to do business with the world. And once you see the world and do business with the world, now you can open up the door and hire more people that will help bring dreams, help make dreams come true. You will hire more people that will help sustain communities. And now you're just saying, you know, I'm going to become global that my business, my operations, not just could be limited or not just hand, be handcuffed with just being local, but I'm going global. We have, when you have a global mindset, you learn that you, you're not concentrated on xenophobia because you see people as potential customers, you see people as human beings, mm-hmm. and you see people relational in, in a relationship uh, status, which will in turn open doors for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, y- you know, I have to mention this, that I uh, I will be honored... Uh, uh, in in O'Fallon, Illinois, uh, for the work that I've done here in uh, Lake County, Illinois, primarily uh, North Chicago, Illinois, Saturday, October 5th, uh, be, uh, by the Emma L. Wilson King Foundation uh, at their annual gala. And, and you know, this was really, um, it reminded me of when my wife got a call from the White House stating that she had been selected uh, to receive the uh, President Obama's um, uh, presidential uh, citations, a presidential award, and she said, "Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> like that." But <laughs> but but it, it, she called two weeks later, and uh, she had all the uh, uh, the transportation arranged, the hotel arranged, and so I got a call from um, a friend of mine in East St. Louis that I had been uh, selected to receive an honor for the work I'm doing up here. So you never know how God works, you know. Oh, most definitely, and, and, most and, definitely. And, and I'm sorry that uh, I, I, you didn't get a chance to participate because I knew if you had the time and ever you, you flew down from, um, uh, uh, I, I was I keep saying Maryland, but... Uh, well, yeah, I, flew, I flew down from Maryland. It was BWI Airport. <laughs> <laughs> to participate and I know you would have uh, participated in our uh, in the gala, you know. But but this Most is something. It, it's sixty nine years ago since I graduated from high school, nineteen fifty, wow. you know. And uh, and people still thinking about uh, traces. They, tra- they 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 tracked me down. They found every every move I made from since the time I left East St. Louis <laughs> to the time I arrived here. So I was I feel very honored to to to. To receive this, um, and, and you yeah. and you should be, you know, congratulations once again, you know, for an honor, you know, well deserved, you know, your work and your commitment uh, mm-hmm. for justice, your commitment, you know, for for the betterment, you know, is definitely uh, noteworthy. So, you know, congratulations. I definitely mm-hmm. wish I, w- if I had known earlier, I definitely would have been there. But you know, mm-hmm. but it's, it's definitely an honor to know you, and just to just just to have. Uh, you know, being your presence at that time. So I think, you know, when people know you and people get to meet you, they will definitely walk away better having having to have met you. Yeah. You know, um, what a God we serve, though. In other words, he gives us unconditional forgiveness, right? Oh, definitely. Amen Un- on that. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, I think you had a... a uh, writing on that one time, unconditional forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Well, you know, when, when, when we look at, you know, every day we mess up, you know, no matter how much we try to do good, no matter how much we try to be better, mm-hmm. uh, we, we do fall short of that. That's what Scripture says, you know, we fall short. But like you said, thank God we serve a God who is, who has unconditional love, you know, mm-hmm. His grace and His mercy is, is definitely 
something we should embrace and cherish each and every day. <laughs> okay. Um, what is, uh, I, I have to mention uh, your wife too. Uh, you said she was uh, an entrepreneur also, right? Yes, uh, my beautiful wife, Kimberly Hudson Gray. She is. A, is, is that the one that so, you, you called when she fell from heaven? Almost. Definitely. <laughs> oh, God. Definitely the best. Definitely, definitely, definitely the best. As soon as she fell from heaven, I caught her. I caught her crab and definitely not letting her go. <laughs> uh, a, a, a true angel, uh, a true inspiration. Uh, uh -huh. A support system, you know. You know, she's she she's everything to me. So, you know, I always say behind every every man is a great woman. So, you know, definitely she she is beyond great. So, no, no. Was she in Mount uh, uh, Rainier, or did you meet her in, no, in Georgia? I met her in Georgia. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, um, I met her when I was speaking at this function, and I looked at her, and immediately I had to talk to her and spoke to her. Very briefly, very generic, but didn't really call her for three months later. Mm. And after three months, spoke with her. Um, and here's the funny thing, uh, Doctor Brooks. After I got after I got elected, <laughs> they sent me on a retreat. And my first night on the retreat, that's when I called her. <laughs> oh. And once I made that phone call, everything was fine and. We, 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 we've been we've been blessed to be married going on three years come January. Wow, how time flies, you know. Oh, well, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I like to say this, though, before we end the program, that we uh, uh, should not be conformed to the world, right? Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's Bible. <laughs> right, okay, <laughs> right, right. And that's what, that's what we mentioned about being here for a reason. It's not to be conformed. Uh, because the devil tried to get Jesus to to conform by offering him everything in the world, offering him everything. And he said he, Most he, he had everything. He couldn't <laughs> offer Jesus anything, right, you know? Exactly. But, you know, you know, we we find that, you know, and he, because, you know, he, he the first thing he did was question Jesus' identity. Uh, for, the, for those who, who probably, uh, they know I'm sure you are Bible scholars who are, who listen to the show, that's the first thing he did during the temptation. He said, if you are the uh. Son of God. So the question is, you know, if I can question your identity, okay. then I can then I can change some things around you. But Jesus knew who he was. Okay. He knew who he was, and he knew who he belonged to. So Jesus not only used Scripture, but he also knew who he was. And that's one of the things about it. When we know who we are and who we come from, then we know, as the Bible says, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Oh, thank you, uh, uh, Pastor Reverend Dr. Sinclair Gray III. We thank you very much uh, for taking time from your busy schedule to share with Lake County. And Lake County is approximately, oh, uh, 750 to 800,000 people. Uh, but, but uh, uh, Pastor, I don't know how many of this 5 o'clock this Sunday morning listen to the program. <laughs> but I, I, I think we have a pretty good audience, uh, too. I, I, yes, I, I, I get a lot of calls and... Uh, and um, and uh, about the program and and I, my schedule is always a couple of months ahead of time, you know, uh, for people that want to want to be on the show. Uh, well, thank you so much. I have I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Yeah, this has been really an inspiration uh, for our county, and and we'd like to have you again. Uh, like I say, we did a fast forward through a lot of topics, but I think of people. If they can go to their Bible and and they could uh, find out. Oh, by the way, I just want to mention this and see if you would confirm before I go. The great, I mean, the original King James was a black man. Would you confirm yeah. that? Yes. Um, from some research, yes. That's, that, that, that's what's been that's, said. So still, still more research, but yes, that's what I've heard. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this has been... Community Focus. My name is Dr. Wandell Brooks, Sr., your host.